What's up guys? Today I thought I'd do a video on the Smith & Wesson 586. The Smith & Wesson model 586 has a carbon steel construction and a blued finish. Holds six rounds of 357s or 38 specials. This firearm uses the Smith & Wesson L frame with a K frame size grip. It has a six inch barrel. All right, I've always been a really big fan of revolvers, and this one is among my favorites. It is just a beautiful looking firearm. The blued finish with the wood grips, it's just a beautiful handgun. Here you go. All right. So when we got out to the range, we did run into a snag. Uh, the firearm was shooting way high. Previously, I had it sighted in for 20 yards, but that was a couple years ago, and obviously it needed to be sighted in again. So we, uh, we adjusted the elevation, and we were able to get shots on target, but it was kind of annoying, and I kind of wish I filmed the, the target afterwards. I was just so happy I was hitting, I didn't really think about it. <laughs> Now, if I did have to say a complaint about this firearm, I'm not a fan of the rear sight. Not that it isn't a good quality sight. I really like that it's adjustable for windage with this screw on the side right here. And then elevation is adjusted by this screw. But what I don't like about it is the white outline is thin. When you're focusing past the rear sight, you kind of lose that white outline. That's one thing I will say about the cheap Glock sights that I like is that thick white line is really easy to pick up, whereas this one, you kind of look past it. Now I will say the front sight, this red front sight, is really easy to pick up, so that's a, that is definitely a benefit, but I, I am a little bit sad that the white line is a little bit thicker. Maybe it would have been a little bit more tacky, I don't know, but that is one complaint I have with it. Now if you look on the barrel, you will see a couple nicks right here. I really am sad about this. I had it sitting on a recliner and I had it on the armrest and I was doing something and I bumped it and it fell onto a plate. Man, did I, that was a bad day. And ever since then, I never put firearms on the armrest of a chair anymore. I learned my lesson, <laughs> but I am a little bit sad about it. I thought about polishing it out and re-bluing it, but I haven't done that. All right, I got some 38s and 357s in here. The double action trigger is fantastic. It is a long trigger, but it's so smooth. And if you gauge it right, you can feel when the cylinder lock latches into, hear it? And then it goes into a single action trigger. So you, if you wanna get precise shots, you can just pull it until that cylinder stop engages. You can hear the click, and then you have a double action or a single action trigger after that. I really do like it, and the single action on this firearm is just beautiful. I like it. And then the cylinder coming out of the receiver and back in, it's just so smooth. And one thing I've noticed about this firearm over budget revolvers is all the shots or all the shells come out so easy, whereas on a budget revolver, they kind of hang in there. On this, they pop out really nicely. I do like that. The grips feel amazing, but I will say I'm not really used to revolvers. Um, I naturally want to extend my thumbs out like you would on a semi-auto, and it just feels weird holding your thumbs back like this because you can't really go that far out because of the cylinder blast. There's a little bit of blast that comes out between the cylinder and the barrel right in here, so you can't really put your fingers all the way forward. So I have to push my thumbs on top of each other, and eh, not my favorite thing in the world but it takes me around six to 12 shots to get used to shooting a revolver after shooting semi-autos, but it's well worth it because I love revolvers. 
What more can I say about it? It's a Smith & Wesson. You can't go wrong with Smith & Wesson revolvers. They're just well made, they're accurate. You can tell there's a boost in uh, quality over, let's say, Rossi's. I'm not trying to pick on Rossi's, but there is a quality difference. And when you're shooting one of these, it's a good time. I really do enjoy it. So I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Please stay tuned. There's gonna be a lot of cool stuff coming up in the future. Yes.